major sponsors for Ableton On Air are Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, Allah Israel. Additional sponsors include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able in Vermont and beyond. On this part two of Mental Health Awareness Day, what you're about to see are speeches from Governor Phil Scott and Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman and others. Let's take a look at this. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce someone I think many of you know, and that's Representative Ann Donahue. Good morning, everyone. I just slipped out from the House Health Care Committee, which is so packed with people. Actually, half the people are spilled out into the hallway. Um, and uh, Mental Health Commissioner uh, Sarah Squirrel, who I think is on her way down here, uh, was just up presenting. And then the committee will be hearing from uh, many folks who are here for uh, Mental Health Advocacy Day uh, in, the next, uh, in the next hour or so. But, um, you know, on my way in this morning, well, not actually on my way in because I couldn't read and drive, but I happened to, I happened to be reading this article in the December issue of Counterpoint just randomly uh, this morning, and I came across this article in it that said reflections on 25 years of advocacy. And I thought, wow, that's fascinating. Wonder who wrote that article. Um, <laughs> And it was talking about somebody who said she first encountered peers as support way back in the early 90s. It was the first place she encountered a peer group of support was actually in the hospital. And that was where she began to understand the power of that and became involved, deeply involved, through all those years since then as a leader in peer support peer advocacy um, and the whole consumer movement, the psychiatric survivor movement from that time. She co-led the uh, state standing committee for adult mental health services for some 12 years. She was on the Vermont Psychiatric Survivors Board of Directors for so many years in those past 25, she can't even remember when she started, uh, but recently retired as um, the chair. Uh, still remains active and sort of a, you know, trying to calm down a little bit in all of her levels of activity, still on the uh, um, uh, DCIL uh, board and on the Alyssum board, um, but an incredible leader and an incredible force through all those years. So I am thrilled to have been asked to be the one uh, to present this person with this year's uh, Community Advocacy Award, which goes to, of course, Marty Robbins. to end with uh, little known facts about personal history 
Okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So Marty and I first met many, many years ago at Central Vermont Medical Center <laughs> as inpatients. <laughs> Safety checks. I've had 
nine rescue uh, call, come, you know, come to my house. I've had eight voluntary hospitalizations. But, I mean, I went into UVM Medical Center. I don't go to end. I've severed ties with NCSS. I work with the Howard Center now, and thank God for the Howard Center. NCSS did not follow processes as they did not, they were not professional, nor, neither was Northwest Medical Center. They, Northwest Medical said I was cleared medically. They didn't ask me one question, nor did they talk to my providers. I have prolonged QT and med many, many medications to cause cardiac arrest for me, and that's a slight medical problem. Um, I was suicidal in the spring because I was on a medication that made me suicidal. But I realized I was still calling crisis NCSS. That was my first mistake. I called them and, but I called them and, and I kept calling and I kept saying I was suicidal, but really what I had was anxiety. I got off the medication. It took three or four weeks to, to um, get the medication out of my system. And, but I just kept on saying I was suicidal when I really wasn't. However, because they never asked me, they never knew. The sheriff deputies who were guarding me knew. They didn't know why I was there. And when I was sent to Brattleboro after seven days with no 12-hour state-required evaluation at all and no initial evaluation, as I stated, when I was sent, the nurses at Brattleboro continuously, talk, I talked to them a lot, and they continuously said, we don't know why you were sent here. This has been a traumatic experience for me. It's 17 months out. I, my life has deteriorated. I had plans. I was going to refinance my house, go back to choir that started in mid-September. I had uh, signed up for Seneca. I had a safety plan. I had a safety team. And yet the psychiatrist of Vermont Psychiatric Care Hospital said to me that she, I mean, it was definite, it was, it was evident. She had made up her mind that I was going involuntary when I, when I got on the little cell phone that NCSS gave me. That is not telemedicine. We had telemedicine in Alaska in the late 70s that was better than what they provided me. It should be a face-to-face, -face, two way communication. Instead, she interrogated me. She told me she didn't trust me um, at all and that I was confusing her and that I was going involuntary. And I do believe that she'd made up her mind before. Um, right, well, I, I know, I, I could go for months, so. Um, so there, negligence, negligence and dereliction of duty by Northwest Medical, Northwest Council of Support, um, and the Monsecchi Yacht Care. I was sent to the environment when the commissioner states that we that even prisoners should go to the least restrictive environment. Tell me if I so five more seconds? Five more seconds. Oh my god. I'm just I try I I had this printed out but then I had a right um the, the petitioner wrote down that I was found at a bridge. He put this in, in the petition, that I was found by the sheriff at a bridge in South Hero, and I said that I was going to go off that bridge. Well, if the petitioner had been in South Hero, he would have known that the lake was dry, and there was no, the tallest bridge was maybe uh, 15 feet off the dry lake bed. Um, there was never any incident with the bridge, but somebody reading that who didn't know would think I was going to go off the bridge. And of course you're going to send me involuntary. There was no bridge. And there were seven, there were like, as I said, there were other critical errors made. Um, as I said, no evaluation. And I think a 
the, okay, let's see. What I, my last statement would be that NCSS, Northwest Medical and Vermont Psychiatric Care, committed suicide on me easier, or rather, yes, they committed suicide more than I could have ever committed suicide on myself. I don't have a life. I have a voice. I use it online. And I, and I will continue because I know it has happened to me. And obviously, I know it's happened here. It's happened and is happening to other people. Thank you.
is because we all struggle in life. We all struggle with various things in life. And the one thing that we always have is help sometimes. Now, a lot of Vermonters don't have friends or family that can help them. This agency, the Agency of Human Services, and what you do, and all the organizations, especially in the mental health field, what you do are those friends. You know, you hear oftentimes nowadays that government is the enemy. And in the last 15 years, I've heard more and more of that. I, I don't buy that. Government is a friend in many instances, especially in what we do here at Human Services. You know, the issues that we grapple every day are, are complex and we've got to be available to respond to the most vulnerable Vermonters uh, and work together in order to do that response. As a community and state partners, advocates, peers, and family members, we must all commit and continue to work together to ensure a strong mental health uh, system of care. I have told department heads a couple of things. One, bad news can't wait. And two, good news can wait. Uh, so, you know, I've instilled that in the agency that bad news can wait. So I, I can't wait. So I want to talk about bad news and some good news as we, as we move forward. First, the bad news, because it can't wait. We've got some challenges here in Vermont that we need to address. Wait times in EDs, and I just heard about a story about this. Wait times in EDs for both adults and children and youth are unacceptable. We need to do better. Current trends in suicide rates in Vermont that are higher than the United States rates, we need to do better there or the growing sense of hopelessness and despair that many of our young, young people and older Vermonters grapple with is something that we need to do better. And I gotta tell you, this shocked me when I saw some of the reports on the youth in Vermont and the pessimism about their future. It just, it really does sort of hit you when you read about that and think, what is going on here? The agency and the administration have clearly underscored the urgent and important need to strengthen our mental health system in Vermont. We've committed to forge a path to ensure fiscal stability to the Brattleboro Retreat. Um, you've heard a lot in the news lately about the Brattleboro Retreat. Uh, we are under discussions with them to put some fiscal stability into the Brattleboro Retreat. 12 new level one beds and the development of a 16 bed physical secure residential facility are underway. Investments in suicide prevention efforts and working with our community mental health agencies to strengthen our proactive community crisis efforts for children, youth, and families through the mobile response team. And this is a, one of the things we're going to experiment in uh, Rutland with mobile response teams. But, you know, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. And we must look strategically at the future of our mental health system. I've said this over and over again, as we, we need to look forward and where do we want to be in the next few years. And we must rethink the system of care and move towards a system where mental health and health care are integrated as we move forward in, in this effort. DMH, the Department of Mental Health's 10-year plan, outlines the framework to, to, to begin to achieve this and improve quality and access to care for Vermont. As I've always said, we have to keep, and then this is something else that I tell um, our, the department heads within the agencies, we have to keep our foot on the gas. And, and we can't let up. Uh, this is hard work, but we're stronger together working together. And it's an honor 
uh, to rise up to the challenges facing our system of care and working side by side with all of you to strengthen it. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. And, uh, and
going to do about it. I have to say on a personal note, this is the last year I'll be here in this capacity. I am not going to be running for a re-election because I'm running for lieutenant governor. So it's my last chance to say to you that ultimately none of this is about the legislators who are here today. If our work is only based on improving the lives of people in this room. So when you talk to legislators, they act like they're too busy sometimes to talk to you. Their work is here to further the, the benefit of your lives and make sure they hear that loud and clear. Ask them what they're going to do to support you and make sure that when you see legislators like the Speaker and Senator Kitchell, uh, Kitty Toll, the Chair of the House Committee, and you, Ginny Lyons, and a number of the other champions of the issues that you're here today, for those people who have taken action and done something, they're the ones, give them a quick thumbs up and a thank you and encourage them to do still more. Thank you so much.
provision of care. The changes that are proposed are, are going to have some of the largest on the ground impact since the closure of the Brandon Training School. And it takes a, a tremendous amount of um, volunteer hours, which is what all of the summer work amounts to, uh, to, to pour through those things and really think about how, uh, how, how are these
Senator Pro Tem's remark. We, as policymakers, of which I'm no longer a policymaker and lieutenant governor, but I was for 18 years, so I'm going to say we anyway, um, really rely on you uh, for your experience, for your passion, for your knowledge that you can contribute to this process. I really want to emphasize this because the joke I, I often tell is that the whole reason I ran to be lieutenant governor is so that I would have one staff person. Because as legislators, they have zero. They have zero staffers to do research, to do constituent outreach, to do anything for them. They schedule them. They are trying to juggle their life outside of this building. They only make 12 to 14, maybe 15,000 a year, which is not an only. That's a real amount of money. But it's not enough, as many of you know, to live on. And so they have another job. So they're juggling a lot. And their source of information, uh, as good as many of the advocates in this building are for these issues, is still limited to those two people and others who are advocating for lots of other things and lots of other needs that are needed to be met in the state. And so when they do hear from you, which to be perfectly honest, is often less frequently than we all want, on most issues, legislators get two or three phone calls or fewer. On all those bills you hear about in the legislature that go through the news, those are only a few high, high profile ones, and maybe those they get five or ten calls on. <laughs> but honestly, people hear, hear from you and others so much less than what a vibrant democracy would have. I'm almost um, And so I'm here as a cheerleader to you uh, and I'm going to ask you a question. And at first, folks might go, oh, no. And so if you don't raise your hand, it's OK, because I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But how many people in this room in the last year have talked to your legislator or all of your legislators? Services, Washington County Mental Health, Allah Israel. Additional sponsors include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International. 